Hello and welcome back to Easy English with James. Today we're going to have a look at something called onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia, what do you think that is? I can tell you that if you learn all about this, it will help you to improve your English pronunciation and your vocabulary. So stick with me, let's find out what onomatopoeia is. Okay, what is it? Simple answer is that onomatopoeia is when the sound of a word sounds like the meaning of the word. So, the sound of the word, that's the sound that comes out when you read the word, actually makes you think that that's like the actual thing that it is. It's very confusing. So, examples will help you to understand this a lot better. The sound that a bee makes, okay? The sound that a bee or something flying makes in English is buzz. Buzz. Okay, we say the fly is buzzing around the room. Buzzing. Now, that word buzz actually sounds like the sound of a fly moving around the room. When a fly is moving around the room, you might hear bzzz. That is onomatopoeia because the word buzz, buzz, sounds like the actual thing. It sounds like bzzz, the flying of a fly or the bee around the room. So we can say that a bee buzzed. Also, when your phone vibrates, we can also say my phone buzzed because when you hear bzz, 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 your phone vibrating, that is a buzz, buzz. So onomatopoeia means when the word sounds like what it is, okay, what it actually is. So the buzzing of a bee or the buzz of a phone ringing, bzz, bzz, okay. Okay, we're going to have a look at 21 examples of this today to make sure that you know exactly what onomatopoeia is. So the first example we just said, the buzz of a bee, the buzz of a phone, because that buzz word, B-U-Z-Z-Z, sounds like the actual sound of z -Z, the buzzing of a phone or the buzzing of a fly. Number two is the crack. Crack. That word crack, crack, the crack of a screen or the crack of an egg. When you like that, that, that sound, crack, is the sound that an egg makes when it breaks. Or when you drop your phone on the floor and your screen cracks, that is onomatopoeia because the word crack sounds like the actual thing happening to your phone or to the egg when it breaks, onomatopoeia. So the crack of a phone, the crack of a screen, the crack of an egg, okay? Something that's moving up and down or bouncing, right? Bouncing up and down like a spring, like a spring, we say goes boing, 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 boing. And the word we write there is boing. Okay, when children are playing on something that's going up and down, we often say boing, boing, boing. If you imagine Mario in the game when he jumps up and down, boing, 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 that is boing, boing, okay? Because it's onomatopoeia, it's supposed to sound like what it is, okay? Number four is the boom of a bomb or thunder. Okay, the boom of something very loud and powerful. If someone has a very deep voice and they scream across the room like, hello, like this, we would say their voice is booming. Their voice is booming. Why? Because boom sounds like something very deep and strong and powerful. Boom. Boom, okay? Often when a bomb explodes, we'll say it goes boom. When thunder makes a sound in the sky, it booms across the sky. Because 
boom is onomatopoeia. It sounds like the thing that it is, okay? If you're walking somewhere and you stand on something, maybe there's a, a, a small animal crossing the street and you go <laughs> like that and you go, oh no, I have squished something. Squish, to squish means to stand on something and sadly squash it, okay? To make it into nothing, basically. Squish is probably the sound that you hear. Squish, okay? Squish. So to squish something, or sometimes to squash something, is when you do this, okay? You stand on something or you do that. Squish, that is the sound you hear when you squash something to squish, okay? If you're on a very crowded train, you might say, I was squished in between many people because people are pushing together. I was squished in between many people on the train, okay? Number six is ding dong. Ding dong, you probably know. This is the sound of a doorbell in English, okay? When somebody rings your front door, ding dong. That is the sound of a doorbell. So ding dong is the sound of somebody opening a door, somebody ringing a bell or a notification on your phone sometimes. Ding dong, okay? You'll often hear this when somebody has a really good idea. Ding dong, aha, okay? The aha moment is represented by ding dong as if a light came on, somebody rang the door. Ding dong, why? Because ding dong sounds like ding dong the doorbell downstairs, okay? Then we have tick-tock. Number seven is tick-tock. Tick-tock, you probably guessed, is the sound of time moving, okay? If you listen to a clock, you'll hear tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. That is the sound of time moving around, the sound of the hands on a clock. So we'd often say the clock went tick-tock, okay? Time ticked away. You'll often hear that in stories when they want to describe time slowly moving. Time ticked away, okay? Because it comes from the sound that a clock makes. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock of a clock. When you slam a door shut, number eight, you'll have bang, the sound bang. Because when you slam something, bang, that bang word represents the sound, bang, okay? Of when something hits something else. If two cars hit each other, you might either say crash, because you'll hear that sound crash. That's crash. But you could also hear bang, okay? If something was a bit harder, if it hits something very hard, bang. Crash and bang. Both onomatopoeic words for something that hits something else, okay? Crash and bang. Number nine, also with a car, is the beep of a car horn, okay? B-E-E-P means beep, beep, okay? When you hear a car outside, beep, beep, or you're on your motorbike and you want someone to move out of the way, beep, beep. We write B-E-E-P, B-E-E-P. Why? Because the word beep sounds like beep, beep, okay? It actually sounds very close. That is onomatopoeia. Number 10 might be the splash, splash of water, splash. When you jump into water or you throw something into water, you'll hear splash, okay? So we write splash, the splash of water. The sizzle of cooking or something really hot, we say that it is sizzling, okay? You know that sound when you put cooking oil into a pan and you heat it and it kind of makes a <laughs> sound? That is to sizzle, to sizzle, okay? and sizzling often goes with hot. So if it's really hot outside and your skin is burning, you might say it's sizzling hot today. It's sizzling hot because it's burning your skin. Sizzle is that sound of something frying or cooking, okay? Sizzle, again, onomatopoeia, because it sounds like the word sizzle sounds a little bit like zzz, the sound of cooking, okay? Number 12 is the clang of pots and pans in a kitchen. Clang, clang, clang. If you have like pots and pans banging off each other and somebody's making a lot of sound in your kitchen, the word we write in English is clang, clang, okay? The clanging of pots and pans. 
in a story where somebody's walking through a market, you might hear the clanging of pots and pans and different items everywhere. The clanging of something, okay? Clang. Number 13 is screech. Screech. Screech is the sound of a car trying to stop very quickly. Or a young girl or boy screaming at the top of their voice, okay? If somebody is shouting but their voice is very high pitched, high pitched means like, like this rather than like this, okay? Low pitched and high pitched. So screech is that horrible sound of a scar going around a corner or a girl screaming at the top of her voice. We say screech. Why? Because screech sounds like the thing that is actually happening. Number 14, the drip and drop of water, okay? If you've ever listened to water falling into more water, you might hear drip, drop, drip, drop. That drip, drop is the sound of water, okay? Drip, drop is the sound of water falling into water, okay? We often describe the rain, drip, drop of the rain, okay? The drip, drop sound of the rain hitting the road. Okay, drip, drop. Okay, number 15 is exactly the same. It's also about rain. And this time it's the sound of rain on a window. We say that rain patters, patters on a window. You might hear the pattering of the rain on the window. You know that sound that rain makes when it sort of gently hits a window? That is the pattering of rain against a window. I love that sound, it's one of my favorite sounds when you're in the winter and it's cold inside and it's raining outside and you can just hear the pattering of rain on a window and if you say it softly patter, 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 it almost sounds a little bit like that pattering of rain on a window okay number 16 is one i'm sure you'll know it is the word haha haha sounds like laughing okay so haha is the sound laughing people make in english and Ha ha is onomatopoeia because when you say the words ha ha, it sounds like you are laughing or finding something funny. Ha ha, okay? The pop of a balloon, okay? If something pops that has air inside it, maybe a car wheel, the tire of a car, pop, pop, okay? A balloon and you take a pin to it, pop, okay? That sound, pop, comes from the actual real sound that is made when a balloon does that, okay? Pop, pop. Number 18, the growl of an animal. The growl of an animal, growl. That sound that a tiger makes, a scary animal when you're looking at it and it's coming towards you, is growl. Because it sounds like the real sound that the animal makes, growl. The cat growled at me. The tiger growled at the lion, okay? Growled, growl. People can do this too. You can growl at somebody. If you say something in a way that is meant to make people feel really uncomfortable, you can growl at somebody, a little bit angry. She growled at me. She growled at me, okay? To growl is onomatopoeia for that sound that animals make or people make when they're trying to do something a bit scary or uh, coming for you, okay? Okay, number 19 is the twang of a guitar string. You know the string on a guitar when you twang like that? That is twang, twang, okay? You can also use this word when you're walking past something metal in the street and you hit it with something by accident. You're walking down the street and you twang your finger or you twang the ring on your finger against something metal. It makes that dong, twang sound, okay? To twang, to twang. Number 20, really easy one. Number 20 is the clap, okay? Because that sound, clap, is the same. It sounds like when we speak the word, clap, 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 okay? C-L-A-P, clap, represents that. That is onomatopoeia. Finally, we have the word Slurp, slurp, slurp is the sound that you make when you're drinking the last bit of a drink. If you imagine that you drank your Coca-Cola and it's all the way down to the bottom and you go like that, 
That is slurp. Slurp. Okay, slurp in English is the sound for drinking the last little bit of something. Slurp. Slurp. Okay, that was the last one, but I want you to see if you can remember or you know any other onomatopoeic words in English, okay? If you know any other words that sound like what they are or what they represent, write them in the comments below. Otherwise, go back and practice the ones that I've just taught you again so that you remember the next time you're walking down the street and you hit your finger on something, ah, I just twanged my finger, okay? Oh, can you stop slurping your drink? That was really good, we all clapped, okay? And you'll use them all the time in English because they're sounds that you often hear every day, okay? So, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you do, hit that like button and that subscribe button, and I will see you again for another English lesson. Okay, bye-bye.